When signing up for a Jewel Cave Camp, which is typically four days and three nights underground, there is always a sense of excitement as your mind is filled with thoughts of exploring vast stretches of borehole extending off the edge of the map. But inevitably, as the date approaches, that optimism starts to be replaced by fear of the physical challenges and suffering that must be overcome. The smallest muscle pain or sneeze starts to introduce doubt about whether going out to these remote camps is wise. It often takes a combination of willpower and a reluctance to disappoint the rest of the team to avoid the temptation of canceling. The camps in Jewel Cave are equipped with enough basic camping gear to support teams of up to six cavers. This cache gear includes tarps, sleeping pads and pillows, sleeping bags, and stoves. Gear that must be brought includes survey equipment, a sleeping bag liner, desiccant packs for the sleeping bags, stove fuel, and food. Roughly half our pack weight and volume is filled with food on the way into the cave and replaced by human waste for the trip out. I weigh and measure every item in an attempt to make sure it's critically needed and that it's as lightweight and low volume as possible. The trips to camp are so long and difficult and include so many climbs and crawls that there's no margin for unnecessary or inefficient pack contents. Breakfast and dinner are consumed in camp. For breakfast, I normally prepare Ziploc bags with two packets of instant oatmeal and two scoops of protein powder. For dinner, I use vacuum sealed Mountain House freeze dried dinners and often add some additional calories in the form of tuna packets. The rest of the food is a scientifically refined mix of sugar and fat that is consumed during travel stops and when taking breaks during the survey. Those stops are roughly every hour when traveling and every two hours when surveying. Jewel Cave has a camp in the southeast branch that was established in the 1990s and two camps in the west branch. We're headed to Deep Camp in the west, which was established just six months ago, to continue pushing the southern end of the splinter section.